We're here at KIA downtown. It's about half an hour away from the airport or less. Cheryl, her parents and I are just gonna have breakfast. One last meal before she flies off. Cheryl, what will you miss most about Malaysia? You. Aside, of course, me, aside from me. Uh, my family. Sydney. So Cheryl's been. Cheryl, you, we used to work together in Groupon, and then Groupon Sydney poached her, asked if she wanted to go. That was what exactly about a year ago? This time last year, she was flying off to Sydney as well. So she comes back to Malaysia once a year? Twice. Once, maximum twice. Once, maximum twice a year. Other times, I go there or we be in between. But this is... What? Your longest trip back since you left? Mm. Hey, this is your first time back since you left? No. No? April. Oh yeah, she came back in April. But that was a long time ago. Look at your mom and dad there, you look so sad. As you guys might know, Cheryl has gone back. I won't be seeing her for another few months. This is her second year working in Australia. And one question I get asked a lot is, how do I do it? How do I do long distance? Is it difficult? Uh, can it be done? Yes, it can be done. Is it difficult? Yes, it can be difficult, but it doesn't have to be. I think one thing that's very important to a long distance relationship is the ability to communicate with one another. I rank communication above trust. Um, why do I say that? Trust, you don't immediately trust someone, not always, uh, but through proper communication, constant communication, uh, the right form of communication, you can build trust. So it's not like Cheryl goes to Australia, I immediately trust her, she immediately trusts me. No, it's built over time. But it cannot be built without proper communication. So I think communication is key. And to communicate, communication, you set expectations and expectations is very important. Her expectations might be here and mine might be there. And if that remains so, we will never meet in the middle. Right? So you communicate, you communicate, you communicate till your expectations are aligned and understood. Um, and I think a lot of people argue and a lot of people stress out with long distance, uh, long distance relationships because of the lack of communication. You don't know what your other partner is up to. You don't know what they're thinking. It's hard enough when you're dating someone next to you. Um, it's even tougher to read someone, to understand someone when they're miles and miles away. So, communication, I think, is key. It's paramount to a long-distance relationship success. And through that, you build trust and you set expectations. And ultimately, there needs to be goals. For example, one of our goals between Cher and I is to meet four times a year. Um, yeah, that's it. That's how long-distance relationships work. I've been in one in my previous relationship for five years and now share with for about a year. No expert about it, but this is what works for me, you know, and I've obviously failed at it in my last relationship. So, yeah, communication, guys. It's key. 
And now, I've got to go get the stranger cat because we found her home. Hey, hey. You need to get a shower, cleaned up, and presented to the people who will be adopting you, Jane. I'm here. Oh, she's Pick her with some treats. Ah! Come back. <laughs> yeah, leave you guys to it. So for those of you who don't know, or for those of you who I haven't been very clear with, Jane is an adopted cat. My mom found her in the basement. She wasn't too, feeling too well. Took her in, took her to the vet, got her vaccinated, uh, got her neutered as well. And she spent about two weeks with us recovering. And in that two weeks, my mom grew very fond of her. So did I. She's a loving cat. And, but the unfortunate thing is she wasn't getting along with no, or rather Peaches was not getting along with her and Peaches is the prince around here so the house isn't big enough for two cats we spent the last week trying to find her a home my mom finally did it's our neighbor uh, they got a little boy who's always been keen to play Peaches and now you know he's got his own cat so much beer. now Jane's getting a shower Getting cleaned up uh, and then later this evening when my neighbors are back, we're just gonna hand over the cat to them. Hopefully everything goes well and Jane spends the rest of her loving life there. Time to go meet your new owners. Get up, get up, get up. Okay. Come, let's go. Poor thing, doesn't know what's happening. No, because of her. Say bye, Jane. Please don't need us. Wow, this is my whole room. My cat is somewhere over here, but I just don't know. And my where owl she... is That's cute. Your owl? Yeah, what's your owl's owl? name? Um, it's actually mine now, so her name is called Owly. Yeah, it's because she's scared. She's such a small animal. She's a small animal. She's so worried. <laughs> I hope this works out. Okay. 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 Thank you so much for dropping the kids. Bye, kids. Bye. I'm a little worried for stranger cat. We'll see how it goes over the next three days. If not, we might have to take her back. That's it for today's vlog. Bye, guys.